Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome. We are super glad to see you guys here today. Welcome to the live stream. Whew. Does it, it's like, I feel like I'm already behind this week, and I'm pretty sure it's because of Memorial Day. Even though I do not, you know, I still am venturing out into the world. But Today feels like Tuesday. It does. Like it does. Like I had the same thing. Which is weird. If every day is the same, why would... Uh, three day, why would a three day holiday mess things up like that? Yeah, right? yeah, right. Yeah. Did you guys do anything? Did you guys do anything fun? I went to a barbecue. I did too. Really? <laughs> With other people. It was so fun. Really? Other people. really? It was so fun. Yeah. My friends had a uh, like a housewarming. Oh. Also, with the with the Memorial Day barbecue sort of situation, she bought a smoker just for mm. this nice. uh, this thing. So um, we awesome. ate, we ate, and I got to see my best friend since like 2018, and what? like, yeah, it was awesome. Hey. Oh, that's so fantastic! That is so fantastic. Well, let's say hi to everybody, and then we'll go around and do our introductions because yeah. we. I think Doll is still going to be making it in. As you guys may have noticed, Caro is not here. She has a new work schedule, but we are going to be um, changing the day of the stream so that we can all be. Oh, that's a good froze place to be frozen. <laughs> Look who's here first. It's. Claude. Oh, sorry. That's fine. Hold on. I like our bigger. Hold on. Let's see. There we go. This yeah. Is much better. All right. Yay. All right. So, uh, hi, Claude. We're glad you're here today. Thank you for being here. Spence is here. Hello. Hello. Rose is here. Hi, Rose. Oh, I love. I love that avatar. It's so sweet. Mary's here. Hello, hi, Mary. Wimbley. JC, hello. All right, Sky is here. Oh my gosh, we got a really long nice time concert. no see, Sky. I know. Jeez. Thanks for being here. All right, Steven's here. Hello. <laughs> I'm very glad to see all of you today because I'm especially glad to see CEO Savvy, and I'll tell you guys in just a second why. <laughs> hello, Amy. We're very glad you're here today. CEO Savvy's here. She came like, oh. from Kara's stream. So, I know. Uh, like, I don't know. I didn't get a notification or anything. I didn't or, either. I didn't even get like a little Facebook thing or I would have come on. Yeah. yeah. Come over. Well, come maybe over not. and hang out in the chat. <laughs> I don't know if I was invited or not, but I would have come over. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, CEO Savvy, I wanted to tell you something. So, I don't know if you guys saw, I did a live stream last Thursday, which is not my normal live stream day. Mm. And the reason I did a live stream was because I was doing it for the U.S. Book Show, oh. which is Publishers, Publishers Weekly decided to take over the slot traditionally held by Book Expo. Oh. And for, for those of you who are not familiar, Book Expo is like, I don't know, it's the world's largest book show, uh, or at least it used to be. I don't know if Frankfurt is now. Uh, but anyway, it used to be the biggest book show, and it was mostly in New York, but it would sometimes be in Chicago and sometimes L.A. It was usually the week before Memorial, weekend before Memorial Day. And if you are a book lover or an author, the place was like Shangri-La, because, right, you know, <laughs> your favorite authors wandering around, suitcases full of free hardcovers. I mean, really, like, I, I used to, like, bring back, bring an extra empty suitcase. Oh, yeah. Because just to carry the books back. And yep. then, you know, then when they started charging you for an extra bag, I would like calculate like, well, I had, I got this little thing where I could weigh my suitcases before I left the hotel room. And so I would like get all the way up to that 50 pound limit. I know exactly <laughs> how many books I can carry in there. So, wow. right, Book Expo was awesome. But after the pandemic, you know, they had to cancel it last year and then they decided they're not gonna do it this year. And Publishers Weekly felt like they needed to come in and fill the void, but they also were not ready to put on a giant book show at the Javits Center, yeah. you know, with like a month's notice. So they did a virtual book show this year, and I believe the plan next year is to do it back to like an in-person event. But they did a virtual book show this year where they had a bunch of different events and all the publishers had booths and all this. And I hosted 
a game show. Let me see if I can hold on. Let me get the little thing. I hosted a little game show last, and because I did it from my StreamYard, I just added my channel onto it, even though it's a day that I wouldn't normally um, stream. So we did, you know, the hashtag Ooh. readers ask authors. Uh. So we had a bunch of mystery writers answering questions that readers ask authors. It was kind of goofy. There was a super funny 70s era, like, intro for the thing, complete with dating game music. So it was kind of, a, it was kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was kind of a cool deal. But. Here's where I get to see O'Savvy. That was a very long story. Mike would call that a Lisa story. Um, <laughs> like that. See O'Savvy was one of like the few people on the channel that like showed up. And I felt like, you know, I hadn't seen you for a while because I know you've been going through some stuff. And I was, I wanted to say like, see O'Savvy, I'm so happy to see you. Except I was for the US book show and I felt like I couldn't do that. So yeah. it was like a secret, like, I see I see, you. I see you. Super glad to see you. So that was it. Hello, darling. Welcome back. We love you. All right. So let's go back. We've got some more comments. JC, everybody's so happy to see CO Savvy. Sky getting a feeling of deja vu. <laughs> Hi, Daily Sacco Detective Fat says <laughs> Hello, Matt. All right. Oh, Sophia's here. Hello. Hi, hey, Sophia. <laughs> Glad you made it today. Margaret is okay. here. Very nice. Hello. Oh, that is such a great picture. Like what a yeah. I love like you get this, like, you get so much right? It's beautiful. Really fantastic. I have no idea what this means, but if somebody it's knows, the smoker okay. and it's true. Oh, the like smoker. <laughs> Yeah, right? she smoked like mac and cheese. She smoked mm -hmm. mushrooms. She oh smoked the pork butt. Like yes. it was, <laughs> yes, smoked galore. Yes, smoked galore. <laughs> All right, that's good. That's good. We have. I did. Yes. I did things like freedom. I went shopping. I which I haven't done in a long time. I, we went to the movies. Ooh, we, oh my God. Right. It was. <laughs> it was so wild. I felt like such a rebel. I'm still dark, scared to go in the dark with, with my mask off, eating popcorn. <laughs> I know, oh, right? Oh my gosh, it was great. It was awesome. Although we did go to like one of those like Cinebistro where you have like just like the big recliner, like the so there's a lot of space between people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're vaccinated, so we're fine. But it was like it was like I felt weird. It felt like shocking and bad to go to the movies. Yeah. Which yeah, is kind of awful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know me. I'm a rebel, guys. Okay, internet and streaming. Sky, I'm so glad Ooh, to hear yay. that. Hey, we're Very so glad nice. to see you again. Morgan is here. Hello, Morgan. Very <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nicole has a great question. Hello, darling. We're very glad to see you. What is everybody working on today? So let's, uh, you guys in the chat, please message and tell us what you're what you're going to work on today. I'm super curious about that. And before we ramble on any farther, let's do a quick intro, and then you guys can all tell us um, what you're working on. So I'll start with you, Sako. Who are you, and what are you working on today? <laughs> Howdy, neighbors. I'm Sako Toomey, also known as Cass Voight. I write horror, and I'm a witch, and I'm a graphic designer, and sometimes I combine those three things. In fact, I'm doing that quite a bit today. Uh, I'm working on draft three of Flambeau, because release date is in September, and like the clock is ticking like, whoa. So we're hoping to get this like hashed out by the end of the month so that we can send it off to readers and, and stuff like that. Awesome. So, uh, um, <laughs> so BC and I, BC and I are, are really cracking down on it this week, so we can do the things. If you are interested in marketing yourself as an author, uh, by the by, uh, I have videos on the topic on my channel. Yep. Uh, I've got a playlist and everything. You should stop by sometime. I would love to see you. You should. There's a link to Sago's channel in the description. <gasps> Speaking of awesome videos, Michelle Schusterman. <laughs> yeah. 
Hi. Hi. That was that year was like, was that a good transition? Um, okay. Well, thank you for that introduction. <laughs> I'm a middle brain young adult author. My YouTube channel is writing workshops and traditional publishing, chat and writing vlogs, and I already wrote the scene for my book that I was planning on writing this morning before the live stream, so I'm actually kind of trying to decide what I need to work on. I'm still, check back in with me before the first sprint. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> all right, we will come back to you and find out all about that. Story Detective, tell us about you and what will you be working on today? By day, I am the Story Detective. <laughs> I'm a bat Sith who's secretly trying to chunk the galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> Very and nice. My channel <laughs> breaks down StoryCraft and puts it under a Sherlockian microscope, analyzes it, and gives it to the viewer to make their craft journey easier. I also do tech reviews, and today I'm working on a piece of tech and trying to get this computer that I refurbished up and running. That's super cool. I love that you can do that. Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa Daly. I write contemporary romance and nonfiction dating advice. And uh, today I'm going to work on the rom-com that I've been working on for the last couple of months, which is I'm getting closer and closer to the end. So I'm very excited about that. I'm not at that like 85% mark, which is where like once you hit that spot, you know, you just sail through to the yeah. end. I'm not quite there, but I'm close, and I'm very excited about that. And I'm a wild woman who went to the movies this week. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's very exciting. Uh, on my channel, we normally talk about how to write a book you're proud of and get it published, except I have been focusing on my actual writing and not doing as many videos lately. So, uh, so I'm doing a live stream every Wednesday, which is going to change soon. And um, uh, 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 yeah, and I'll be doing videos later. Until then, you can check out Sako's videos and Michelle's videos because they are super awesome. I think we team up and do like an awesome thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, you guys. Let oh, see how Savvy says. I think my heart just exploded. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, you guys. Here we go. Let's go a couple more comments, find out what everybody's working on today, and then we're going to do the five minute warm up. Uh, and then we'll come back, chat a little bit, and we'll do our 20 minute sprints. We got to get some work done. All right. Sky says that's really cool. The only book related convention I heard of until now is BookCon. Book Expo, like, was the shit. <laughs> I mean, really, like, yeah, right? Cool. I, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Heather's here. Hello, Heather. Hello. We're super glad you made it. JL, wondering if you missed any dancing. No. Michelle <laughs> is going to be dancing at the halftime, so you want to stay tuned for that. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I had smoked brisket leftovers in a quesadilla yesterday. It was delicious. Oh, hell yeah. That sounds good. That yeah. sounds really good. We can't talk about food because I have leftover Cheesecake Factory. Also, me, Rebeling, yesterday, mm -hmm. I've leftover Cheesecake Factory in my refrigerator, and I'm not going to make it two hours if you start talking about food for the first 15 minutes. You guys are going to have to watch me eating my burrito grande in my <laughs> cheesecake. All right. Spence is organizing her kitchen today trying to throw everything I own out just to see stuff I don't see myself using even as my social calendar for the summer fills up. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. We're having a party, a little party for um, the 4th of July. Actually, the 3rd of July, which is where the fireworks, when the yeah. fireworks go off yeah. where we live. Okay. Impulse to throw everything I own out and not have to clean anymore is strong mm -hmm. today. You're like fully Marie Kondo right now. <laughs> You can do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, JL is working on edits for her middle grade series. Sky is catching up on journal for the stream to prepare for the Boozy Planorama this weekend. Yay! That's right, you guys. The Boozy Planorama is this Sunday at 8 o'clock. I oh. will be popping that up uh, soon. On uh, So you'll see it on the channel. Uh, and, of course, Carol's going to co-host with that because it's Carol Lisa's Boozy Planorama. Great. Yay. I hope you guys can all make it there. Morgan says, OMG, Lisa, you scared me when you said my right. name. I'm working. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, sorry about that. Working on fast drafting my fantasy book. Good job. Very nice. Look who made it. It's yay. Doll. Yay. yay. We're glad to see you, doll. Yay. All right. Mary is working. Hello. Let's finish what we said to Mary, and then we'll say a quick hi to Doll yeah. uh, and let her gather her thoughts here. Mary says she's working on the same thing as last week, cleaning up, organizing my workspace. Oh, my gosh, you guys. If I had a camera, I could take off and show you what my desk looks like right now. <laughs> you would die. <laughs> Uh, trying to work on shadows of the past. Clutter is too distracting. I feel you there. Uh, also going to be logging into work in an hour. Well, we better get going. So, Doll, Cecil, Runa, we're so Hi. glad to see you. Hi. All right. Uh, we already did our intros, but let's do a super quick one yeah, super for quick you. One. Tell yeah. us who you are and all about your little channel. Mm. Hello there, humans. I'm Dulce Silverno. I'm a partially blind author, also known as the Ace from Space, and I write sci-fi, a little bit of poetry, and short stories in different genres. My channel is a little bit <laughs> quiet for a while, but I do a lot of things on Instagram, so if you want to know more about me, you can follow me there. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Thank you. And also, uh, if you guys want to link to uh, Doll's channel, it's down in the description below. Although I'm looking yes. at this crowd and I think pretty much everybody is already subscribed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Amy, if you can believe it, I'm actually working on a creative project and it's new. Yay. Speaking Yay. of creative projects, Amy, I owe you comments on my website in progress. I'm still working on them. Just so you know, I did not fall off the planet. Very much. I did go to the movies, though. <laughs> so I'm totally a slacker. Yeah. All right. Sky says, is it because I just declared right wars, Amy? Ooh, nice. Okay. Claude wrote seven seams of the fun and games beat so far. We'll brainstorm the next ones today. Ooh. All right. That's awesome. Michelle's pub chats are legend. Wait for it. Dairy. <laughs> I feel like somebody else could do a better job with that. Robert? <laughs> Come on. Let's say it. Michelle's pub chats are... Legend, wait for it, dairy? No, like, legend, oh, God. wait for it, dairy. Okay. I feel like somebody could do a better job. Maybe I should call the horror geek in here. All right. I love it. Okay. Uh, Amy says, yes, Sky. She decided to go for it. I'm super proud of you. That is awesome, Amy. Cool. And Sky. Uh, Margaret needs to bring my story structure stuff from the car and get organized for an editing structure system session. Woke up late after driving half of California. Good. Gracious. Well, I'm very proud of you for being here today. Yeah. Yeah. See you, Sap. You'll have time because I'm going to just go through like a couple of email or emails. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> couple of comment, couple more comments about what people are doing, and then we're going to do our five minutes. So that is a perfect time to run to your car. Yes. Co savvy, working on re-outlining my adult contemporary had dual timeline with 1995 and 2010, but the 95 plot got away from me. I, Michelle, <laughs> so that'll be the primary plot, and the epilogue will be 2010. That sounds mm. like a good solution. That sounds like a good solution. You know it. Oh my gosh, can I say this? I saw Cruella, which oh. I went, to, yeah, no, it was awesome. It was incredible. I had very low expectations and I loved it. Mm, I thought it was great. Yeah. And the funny thing is, I should have known. I love Emma Stone. I love Emma Thompson. I. It was great. It was great. Absolutely fantastic. Really? Well, love, love, love. Yeah. Surprising. You know what it reminded me of? You know how the first time you ever see Wicked, like it makes you look at the Wizard of Oz in a completely different way. Same kind of thing with Cruella. It's sort of like the backstory, it, not sort of, it is the backstory of Cruella and it's kind of awesome. So, all right, uh, you guys, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's just, let's just do the five minutes because I have a lot of things to say about Cruella and the wearing <laughs> fur. That's never going well, to change. No, sorry. And, anti-fur here uh-uh no no sorry I myself no. am anti-fur I'm anti-fur right. I just I just wonder well I don't want to give away any of the movie but I I we're I think most people now are anti-fur not all I guess but most people I, are anti yeah. I watched a uh I watched a uh breakdown of Cruella yeah and um I'm struggling to see how like that character becomes a you know a puppy skinner like 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but then you think like, okay, is this really? It's like Wicked, where you, where it causes you to kind of look at all what you think you know and reconcile it with new information. Okay. So, which I always love when there, when a project makes me look at something that I know really well in a different way. So, mm. okay. I'm not going to say any more though, because I don't want to ruin it for anybody. I'll have, I'll have to watch it. I know. I would say it's worth watching. I really enjoy it. It was just fun filming and like fun movie going mm. anyway. It was a perfect like first movie to go back mm. uh, to seeing movies. I was telling everybody, I can't remember if it was before we started or after, but I was telling everybody I felt so wicked sitting in the movie theater eating popcorn without a mask. I, th I could have been naked and felt a lot more comfortable. <laughs> it, was that, it was that like weird and uh, like you're just used to having it on your face now. So, All right, you guys, we are going to start with our five minute beach time, beach timer. I'm reading now. Oh, I'm a loser. <laughs> We're starting out with our five minute warm up. Uh, and everybody get their projects going, run out to your car or get your snack if you need to. Uh, and we will be back in five minutes. So I'm going to just start this out. There will be no pep talk for the five minute warm up. <laughs> get your stuff ready. When we come back, uh, we'll get Doll to give us the really good warm up for the 20 minute sprint. For now, you just kid the bones. Here we go. Warm it up in three, two, one, get going.
All right, everybody. <clears throat> so, all set. Re Michelle, did you figure out what you're working on today? Actually, yeah, I forgot. I have um, a client whose book I ghost wrote a couple months ago asked if I would write like a description. She's going to self publish it. And so she wants like the good Amazon descriptions. Or, yep, yep. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> awesome. So this is interesting that you say that. I always feel comfortable with writing back of the book copy because I worked in advertising for a long time and I just feel pretty comfortable with it. But a lot of authors really don't. So you do? Yes? I enjoy it. I yeah. find it really fun, yeah. Yeah, I do too. Sako, how about you? Do you like to write the back of the book copy or not? Oh, did I mute you or did you? You are muted. Wow. Um, I prefer to write the book at the back, back of the book copy um, before I write the book and yep. then I'll write it again after. Hmm? We talked about that I at a, in a previous year. I, that's actually the very first thing I do when I'm starting a new book is write the back of the book copy because it helps you sort of encapsulate what it is that you want to say. Right. Perspective. Are you going to, are you, do you think that this is something you like, don't like? What, how do, how do you feel about writing back of the book copy? I usually do like what would essentially become the 30 second handle for the book. And sometimes Wait, hold, hold. So, sorry, man, you're, you're uh, starting to wash out. I don't know if it was you or something else. Did somebody just have a big truck drive through their living room? Yeah, it sounded like a big wave or a... Yeah. Sure, <laughs> yeah. let's see. Oh, I think, I think, yeah. Okay, I think we've got it now. I think it's good. Okay, so tell us again. You start with... What would be like my 30-second handle or, you know, both, yeah. um, 30 second pitch. But it, it starts out more like a paragraph and a brief description to get an idea of the... Um, the concept and the premise and uh, nail that down because as Sako said that is helpful to have before you start writing because yeah. that fuels everything if you understand where it's going yeah. sometimes that can change up a bit as the book goes on and you nail some things down but usually the uh once i get the premise and the the concept down it doesn't change a lot so that's important okay how about you doll do you feel comfortable writing the back of the book copy or no 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 <laughs> just yeah. flat no. no it really is a different skill set so i mean and there are a ton of authors that wouldn't like like no thank you that is it's a whole different deal what about you guys in the audience in the audience in the they're an audience. Well, I guess they are theoretically. It's more like it's, we're more together than it just. It's being more. Like it's more like true. friends. It's more like it's friends more like who friends. just happen to be in the chat. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, is in the back of the book copy essentially a shortened version of the synopsis? I struggle with synopsises in general, but only because I'm long-winded, so it can get lengthy. I know mm. it. There really is. Uh, I mean, it really is hard to like sort of leave. Uh, leave out the things you want to give enough of the plot away to get people intrigued, mm -hmm. but and you have to make sure that they know that what they're getting, but also you don't want to, you know, you want to make sure that they read the book. So it is challenging, it's a hard, it's thing. very challenging. Um, so what I do is, um, I talk about the natural world. I talk about the inciting incident. I talk about the first plot point and then question mark. <laughs> so, <laughs> like. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. I know. All right. So, that's like just enough to kind of like bring them in and mm -hmm. then. And then they get to read the book. And suck Good. them in enough where they have to buy it. All mm -hmm. right, let's do some comments, you guys. CO Savvy says, Ooh, a wild woman who went to the movies. Isn't that redundant for a romance novelist? <laughs> yes. We're all wild women. Just ask us. Sky says, Woo, no, nobody in particular. Hello, Amy. Nicole trying to figure out why copyright page formatting in the ebook is screwed up. Oh, that's frustrating. You know what? Are you doing it in InDesign? Because I struggled with my copyright page 
in InDesign for some reason. Like something about the huh. formatting. Is it still just... true? Yeah. Huh. Is it still true that if you are working on a Mac, you can just do it as a Word document? Like, right? Uh, I'm sure it that you way? could, but please don't use Word to format your document. No, no, please. no. No, just the copyright page to format oh, it. Oh, just the copyright page? Yeah. yeah. I, could, I yeah. could see that. I could see that being a thing. Please don't use Word, she said. <laughs> please don't We should use have Word. another conversation about that. Hello. I only I only have word, so I know I know that I need a formatter help. So yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, that's good to know. Okay, Jean is here. Hello, you're not Hi, that late. Jean. Hello, everybody. Heather's kids last day of school next week. All right. Yeah, that happens, right? Okay, so JC is working on her outline for a mystery book. Margaret says the Emma's rule. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, she says I wear my Louis Vuitton fox fur scarf all winter long. <laughs> She's kidding. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I have such a visual of that. That was perfect. Yeah. Um, Allie's here. Hello, Allie. Very nice to see you. Writing my circus performer PI story. I actually had um, an idea for uh, a circus uh, series. Uh, so I think that, which I have not written yet, may never write, because when am I gonna have time for that? But I love this idea, it's super, super cool, really fun. There's something so, like there are a lot of people who are sort of afraid of the circus. And so even though it seems happy and fun to a lot of people, there's like this undercurrent of scariness there. I think it can be really very awesome. Laura's here. Oh, I heard the little Mac. Um, <laughs> Chime. I know that sound anywhere. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sia says uh, on K drama for the uncanny counter, d demon hunters disguised as noodle workers. <laughs> I found myself empathizing with a villain who murders people. That doesn't make me a bad person. It makes them good writers. That is true, yes. right? I don't know. That's if you guys like that's like my bread and butter. Is yeah. to have is to write from the perspective <laughs> of a villain, and um, they, the reader, commiserates with the main character, and yeah. then they, the character will do something monstrous or whatever, and the person reading has questions about themselves that they're silently answering. Mm -hmm. So, like, the, that's. That's my favorite. That's my, that's easily my favorite thing to write. I actually wrote, I, I got a, an advanced copy of something borrowed, which was Emily Giffen's debut novel. Mm -hmm. And I read it and it's about, for those of you who don't know, it's about a woman who uh, went to law school with her best friend's fiance and she's been in love with them the whole time. And they, get into a little bit of a thing and there's like, and, and what I, I sent her a message after I read the book because I was like, I have, you know, like I'm a dating expert and I literally was cheering for this woman <laughs> to steal her best friend's fiance. Oh and God. that is really, right? That is really, really good writing. If you can get someone, mm -hmm. if Dude. you can create a character that will make you go against your own you know, the well, readers go against their own sort of perceived values or mores, I think. I not, I not only wrote a character like that, I also spoke for a character like that. <sighs> wow, see? <laughs> Very nice. Sorry, you just said it's someone who murders people and you're cheering for her and I'm over here like, oh, that's my friend Hulda. <laughs> right, right. Uh, <laughs> You're hilarious. That's lovely. You could just reach <laughs> Michelle on Read Z and any of the rest of us on social media. You're yeah. All right. There you go. Okay. So Margaret says the beach noise is drowning him out. I don't think it's the beach because that is closed. All right. <laughs> Maybe. Let me look. Hold on. Nope. It's not the beach timer. I think it might be a truck. Okay. Uh, JC says, isn't the back of the book copy? 
Uh, oh, no, we just already did that. Sorry about that. I jumped around. This is my uh, fault. StreamYard doing what it does. Yeah. So Sky says, I didn't like writing it previously, but then I read How to Write a Sizzling Synopsis by Brian Cohen. Oh, and now I actually yeah. like it, which is weird. All right, I have to check that out. How to... Mm -hmm. I'll put it, look it up on my and put it on the wish list thing. Uh, oh, thank Sizz you. How to Write a Sizzling Synopsis, huh? Yeah. yeah. All right, I will um, add it into the uh, description. Brian Cohen, all right. Uh, after, sometime during the next um, mm. stream, or during the next uh, sprint. sprint. A step-by-step system for enticing new readers, selling more fiction, and making your books sound mm -hmm. good. And don't we all want to do that? Mm -hmm. all, right. all right, Mary says, it took me forever to be able to write a short synopsis for a blog post. I should probably update it because it's been forever. Ooh, CEO says, the query formula never fails to help with yeah. the That's the query right. formula. You know, yeah. as a self-publisher, I never have to query and stuff like that. That's just like a thing I don't have to do. But, it, but, uh, but the... The whole system revolving around querying and stuff like that seems so useful in the mm -hmm. long run that I'm, I'm sure. seriously thinking about like giving it a shot just to. I'm in know. the query system and I don't know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, here's the thing: it, query is basically a like a it's a pitch. mini it's market, a pitch, a pitch and a mini marketing plan. That's exactly. I think it. they're all the same, aren't they? Like if you write yeah. a description for Amazon it could also work as your query it's the same That's exactly it and so you're it, like here's the audience here are the other books that are similar to my book right which is a way to find your audience so yeah those <laughs> elements that are, go into a query are very helpful for um for people who are publishing on their own. Fact, those books. are all questions you need to know yeah. You what? <laughs> My comparison books. <laughs> I, 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 have, I, I don't have any. You want to make here? Okay, so comparison <laughs> books. They have to be within two years old. They should be in the same <laughs> format. So if you're pitching a trade paper publisher, then they should be trade paper or hardcover if that's what you're going for. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, the topics for my book are very. Um, how is it niche? Uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to necessarily be the same topic. You're basically looking for readers of this book would also like this book. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, yeah. It doesn't have to be the same topic. It just has to be that's what the same doing. audience. Okay. That's really what you're looking for. I have a friend who is super into the querying process and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And um, I'm thinking I might do like a workshop for like, putting together query stuff is and it, doll, is it Morgan? if you want to, yeah, it's Morgan. <laughs> so, um, like doll, if you want to join us for such a thing, like I'll be there. Yeah. All right. Very good. All right. JC says all I use is word. There are plenty of people who use word. True. Mary says I'm a word girl too. Have been for years. Yep. Why are you crying? Because I'm a graphic designer. Oh, so you can't make you probably can't make it quite as fancy, although you can probably make it pretty fancy. But honestly, when I'm reading a book, I'm not usually there for the pictures. I'm not usually there for the fancy. But as a graphic designer, I look at the type as the picture. Right, that's true. So like you can always bring extra type, like you can always bring new type fonts into uh into Word. All um, right. That's tr true. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, not everybody has InDesign or has the, you know, it's no, I understand that, and not everybody can use it. So, Word is a good substitute. The book formatters exist, I'm they just, do. Sky says, I've been using Vellum and InDesign for formatting since switching from Word. I hated using Word for formatting, it never turned out correctly, ever. Ever, Nicole, <laughs> well, we have like, we now have like a battle going on here. I use Word, I don't have a Mac, so I keep the Word document symbol. To be fair, I only Flip. When yeah. I asked that, I didn't, I just don't know, I didn't know if you could use Word with a PC. I knew you could use it with a Mac, but I didn't know if you could use it with a PC. All right, so good, good mm. information from Nicole. I don't have a Mac, so I keep the Word doc simple and let Drafted Digital do the heavy lifting. Cool. It keeps adding indents on the copyright page for some reason. That's you should be able to, um, if you hit Control-R, 
a ruler will pop up at the top of the screen and it has these little notches that you can shift around to move your indents and your following copy. Very good. All right, JC makes an excellent point. I have to use what I have now because if I wait to be able to be able to get things I can't get right now, then who knows when anything will come out. That is exactly, right. I think, right? Yes, sure. get the work out there. You do not need special writing shorts or, right? You just need, well, maybe you do. I have vellum and <laughs> InDesign. So like raw. if people want, if people want book formatting, man, that, exactly. that is in my wheelhouse. All right. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I, I understand JC's though. I understand JC's no, yeah. circumstances because like I don't have all the gear that I wish I could have mm -hmm. to sure. make everything so professional. And also I don't have the skill set. For example, Sako has a skill set that I don't have. So this is this is the reason why everybody knows this. This is why I went into the querying process. Right. Because I, I, I have high standards, but I don't have the methods. So, <laughs> uh, so which is the best thing. That's the best thing, right? So the, there is a, a business proposition, not proposition, but a, a like a tenant where you hire the people that are good at the things you suck at so that you're you have like a wonder team right so um this applies to you know like your situation for instance like you don't know the thing so you want to delegate you want to you want somebody else to pick up the heavy lifting right so like you know, there are people like me who would be happy to pick up heavy lifting when it comes to like book formatting and stuff like that. Yeah. True. Yeah. All right, you guys. We Art. this has been a fascinating conversation. We are forty five minutes in though, and we have not done a twenty <laughs> minutes. Actual sprint. twenty so minutes sprint. Right. We are gonna start that off. Actually, let me get to make this big really fast. Okay. Doll, would you like to take yes. us out for this one, please? Okay, here we now go. Now let's do this. Everybody, we have a lot of projects to accomplish this month. It's just the 2nd of June, so it's time to boost yourself up. Get ready to get those words down or house chores or whatever it is that you're doing right now. Get it done in 20-minute sprints. So we start in oh. three... <laughs> Spring now. Sorry.
All right. Hold on just one second. I just somehow separated the uh, things. So, okay, hold on. Let me get rid of this. There, all better. Let me make sure everybody's. So, some of you may have noticed that Michelle has disappeared. Uh, that is because she actually had a family event uh, that she had to leave for at 12. And I meant to give her a chance to say goodbye to everybody, um, but I we went so late before we did our sprint that uh, by the time uh, we went to sprint, she sent me a message and said, hey, don't forget, I'm checking out today. So anyway, we will miss her. She's a lovely addition as always. How did everybody do on the uh, sprint? Lousy. Lousy. <laughs> Lousy. Okay. Would would you like to, you know, sort of qualify? Give us a give us a one expand word. on that. Yeah, a little bit. exactly. <laughs> Problem. Really lousy. Troubleshoot here, and um, I'm not sure if it's missing a driver or what's going on, but it's uh, it's just a pain. <laughs> oh no, that's no good. That's no good at all. All right, I can feel that. Uh, Sacco, how'd you do? I hung out in the chat mostly. I did a little bit of writing on the book, but I also did a little bit of writing in the chat talking about um, book formatting and mm -hmm. topography mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, and how I got into it. So, because like I learned book formatting in college. Mm. So, people think that it's just a matter of flowing text and it's not it has a lot to do with like this space between words sure. and like how it how it flows mm -hmm, from page mm -hmm. to page all right well cool very good i haven't seen that yet because i was actually writing i'm super excited about that uh doll how'd you do today I'm writing right. captions. I'm writing captions for my Instagram posts because I have, I have to cut off. I'm long-winded with them, and it's nice if you do one or two, but not ten of them. So, um, uh, <laughs> um, so I am uh, figuring out which ones I can go long-winded uh, and which ones are just like, "Hey, how's your day going?" Or <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. All right. So Jean, like from uh, our last conversation, Jean says she will buy Allie's book uh, about the circus mystery, which I love. Hold on. She talked a little bit about that. Where'd it go? Wait, wait. Uh, oh, must be farther down. I really, StreamYard really, really did jump a lot. She says, a lot. thanks. Uh, Mary said, stuff too. I know. Mary says, Natalia did a video last year about formatting in Word. It was pretty good. Uh, now that we're going to Wattpad, we're just keeping the format super, super simple. Simple is mm -hmm. always good. Oh, here is, so here's what I wanted to bring up. Allie says she solves the murder in every town the circus goes to that just happens to occur when they're in town. <coughs> Which means she's huh. the, okay. uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I get it. Hmm, I know it's really, uh, I, I think it's a great little premise there. I think that's really fun. Heather has a friend who writes circus themed mysteries. She lives in Gibsonton. Uh, Gibsonton is just south of Tampa. So that's kind of in the general area where Heather and I are. She's an mm. FWA member. I can't remember her name right now. Isn't that mm. interesting? Uh, Mary Wimbley, Bethany just did a series about how to format using Word as well, and it's pretty helpful. That I bet nice. it is. I bet it is. There um, are tons of there are tons of books that are formatted with Word, and I think what JC said, like I think what you'd said earlier, Sako, completely valid. And if you can't do it, and you have the budget or the tradable skills to have someone else do it, that's awesome. But I also think it's more important to get that work out then worry about perfection. And that is true, Absolutely. right? That's true with almost everything. It's more Absolutely. important to finish, get it out there in the world, start building an audience. All right. Uh, if I'm just using vellum, like I would charge like practically nothing. Yeah. Like, just to flow it into vellum and then, and then kind of like tweak stuff. Just make it, make it good. All right, well. Make it good. 
I will keep that in mind um, because as I think I mentioned last time, I got rights to two of my books back and I'm going to do a re-release on my very first novel, which I'm very excited about. That's super uh, exciting. I, right? It'll give me a chance to kind of play with indie publishing, which I'm very excited about. Margaret cool. is doing a comp panel uh, on the comp process and myths and tips. If anyone's interested, uh, message her end of June, early July. I would totally, cool. I would totally do that, Margaret. So the hook up. All right. Theo Savvy says, if there's a comp called James Bond, but with fairies, <laughs> then I think you can find your comp. Yes. Very good. I think you can find your comp dolls. What she says. Uh, I found one that I need to read because it's a collection of short stories, so it's nothing like my book. But mm -hmm. the short stories have a lot to do with astral projection and like spiritual sci-fi technology, whatever. And I was like, yes. whoa, 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 I think I found my comp. See? Now, <laughs> now, it, now it's an indie book. It's, you know, it's a collection of shorts. So it, it's very different from my book, but I think the people who like that book would like, would also like mine, I guess. Okay, so so the other part of that, the other component about that, so that's one, right? It doesn't have to be the same exact kind of book. You can have sort of a shared audience and even a collection of short stories would probably work, but you want your comps to sell. The whole purpose of comps is mm -hmm. that you want yeah. to show the publisher that yeah. this is a viable idea. It's an, obscu it's an obscure indie book, so. <laughs> it's okay, look at the numbers. If it's selling, that's okay. What okay. What are you gonna say, okay. Robert? Do comp titles really have to be comparable to what you're writing or do they have to be just semi off in left field of a book that's a, a book that is selling that agent can say, OK, I see that this is selling, so it's going to catch my interest enough to. Yeah. So, so the book that um, BC and I are writing, Flambeau, mm -hmm. um, the comp titles would be like Mm -hmm. Iron Druid or Dresden Files or, you know, early Anita Blake, right? Popular that somehow has Right. Would that like, book be on the same shelf? Right. But you do, but not too popular. You do not want to say your comp is Gone Girl because no, no. A, a thousand other people are saying their comp is more than that. Yeah, that, a hundred that, thousand that I'm aware other people. Of. Right, are yeah. saying their comp is Gone Girl, and everyone not who writes fantasy says right. Harry Potter. I know, I know, exactly. I know. That's, so you that's you want not, something that no. sells well, and I think you mentioned what did you say earlier? Dresden Files. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good comp because it sells really well. It's popular within the genre, but it's not this. It's not Harry Potter. And so mm -hmm. that sort of happy medium where it's a strong seller, but it's not a major breakout bestseller because they're just going to discount that. You might as well not even put a comp in if you're going to, mm -hmm. right? I'm, but put that book's comps. I'm in a, I'm in a middle category because it's sci-fi, yes, but it has an element of literary with own voices, and it's like, what, what, what is your book even? And I'm like, I don't need, I, I don't know. I'm in the middle. I, I don't know what I'm doing. And I, I just wrote a story. And it's like, yeah, it's sci-fi, but it's not the sci-fi that usually it's like you're in the middle of everything. You're you're a category in the middle, like overlap. And then I'm like, okay, and my mm -hmm. only comp title, my only comp title turns out to be a historical fiction. <sighs> you know, Margaret, you know, Margaret, um, I am really intimidated by Scrivener's formatting. Oh, I love it. So it's just a matter of me sitting down mm. and actually becoming familiar with mm -hmm. its formatting tools. But yeah. um, there is no, it is nothing to scoff at. Like it. No, they know what they're doing over there. Doll, yeah. you made a good point. You don't. I think what. I, let me wrap stuff up together. Yeah, yeah. The, Dangling plot threads always bug me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so one thing that Sako said that's very useful is what shelf is your book on in the bookstore? So imagine yourself at a Barnes & Noble or whatever your local bookstore is and think about what shelf in that bookstore is your book going to be on and what are the other books on that shelf? Because I'm pretty <laughs> sure your book, even if it has elements of this other book, is not historical fiction. You definitely want to stick no, to it your isn't. genre. 
Exactly. Yeah, it so is sci- not, not so at all. Stick to sci-fi. Yeah. So stick to sort of sci-fi and then find comps within that specific area. Okay. Margaret's question. Does no one use Scrivener? I use Scrivener. I actually love it. And I like when you take all the little parts and you hit the magical compile button and it all spits out as one giant manuscript. And awesome. I have never used it to format an ebook though. Is that a thing? And I'm going to read the comments because my thought is it, prob- it, is it probably That's- is. Let's see. Oh, Does anybody it. know? Plot thread. What? Did I miss another one? No, it's just my own personal because um, for writers, especially traditionally published, you have an agent. Back when I was doing comic books, most people didn't have an agent. So I got to see the behind the scenes and I compared it with writers and other people. Mm. So correct me if I'm wrong, Lisa, but here's here's the thing with the whole query process and what you're up against, because I had to go behind the scenes and talk with dozens of editors at big and small companies. And what it is, is most people who are agents and editors within this industry, the, the entertainment world overall, don't really have a lot of craft or story knowledge. Most of them, there's some that have literary degrees, but most don't. Uh, Some just go in and impress people at interviews with their book knowledge and opinions, and they get these jobs. So these are the people that's hiring you as somebody who's spent all the time in craft knowledge and trying to get your book together. And it can work if you speak the same language, but you go into an office and here's what you do. Like I would make an appointment with one editor, and then I would go through the whole editorial floor so you go to some people and it's like have no work sorry Mm -hmm. and they just turn you away others kind of will talk to you like a human being but that's rare most will come up with what they think of as witty things like i have three basic questions and if you can't answer them and know who these people are or what this is or what Mm -hmm. you have no business being here you get the questions wrong it's like that's it for you (laughs) <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. That they have lined up for criteria that's not part of the criteria, but it's a fusion of what they know in terms of the criteria of the industry and their personal opinions about yeah. it. And yeah. Then, <laughs> and when they're actually looking, you have to be in sync with that. So yeah. It's really, it's really a game where you're throwing darts at a dartboard and you finally hit it. Yeah, there so yes, because right, all these industries are run by human beings and they all we all add our own like personal biases. Obviously, my opinion on comps is different than other people's sometimes because I most my books are published traditionally and also I work for a publisher. And so between those two things, I know like the back side of it and the front side of it for traditional publishing, but I'm not going to be very helpful to you if you want comps for, well, I think a lot of it crossover cr- has a crossover, but I don't know how helpful I would be. There might be some other secret sauce that you need for comps for, um, for indie published books. What I will say is that there are so many books published every year and what they want to know in three seconds is what is it like and who else would like it. And so if I can go in and say, this book is like, uh, you know, I'll give you a good, uh, Charlene Harris wrote vampire books for years. They sold okay, but, uh, you know, they sold pretty well, but they didn't, they weren't like, like they are now, yeah. right? But then when uh, Twilight Lady Stephanie Myers came along, they go, okay, well, here are these books that have an audience for this series. It's not Anne Rice, which is 100 million years ago. So this is a re- you know contemporary series that continues to sell. Is it blowing out the bookstore? No, at the time, no. But there's a market for it. There are people who are buying that and that's what they want. They want to know it's not, you don't want your comp to be something that sold, you know, 2000 copies. You want something that's actually moving. That's actually new that shows that there is an audience who wants to read a book like this. But the other thing is you're helping connect your book to another book in the mind of the bookseller Mm -hmm. or the book buyer or the Mm -hmm. publisher so that they can figure out what your book is like amongst all the other gazillion books. If you can say, oh, it's like this other book. And this is why so many, this is why so many um, queries will say, 
uh, who used this? Um, oh, what was the thing? Something with fairies. Um, oh, James Bond with fairies. James yeah. Bond with fairies, right? <laughs> so you combine two things you know and get an idea. So instead of trying to sell a, some brand new thing, you go, it's James Bond with fairies. And now I know what that's about. Even if I've never read it, I get James Bond with fairies. And so <laughs> that's what you're just trying to help stick that book in the publisher's mind and they go, oh, I love the Sandman Slim series or, yeah, oh, I, I love the, I love the Artemis Fowl. Oh, I love this. Then you're helping connect your new idea with the, mm -hmm. and they go, okay, well that book has some fans, sold some copies. Let's look at that. Yeah. All right. And, and um, I wouldn't, blah, blah, I, blah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I wouldn't um, completely bank on yes. astral projection, but the kind of experiences that they're having while they're underway w would also be something to um, you can comp with as well. That that's why I have that comp title of the the historical fiction one because when you look at that story, the circumstances of the both characters, because what a coincidence, it's a dual POV where there's a, a boy who is doing evil things even though he doesn't want to, <coughs> same as mine, and a mm. blind girl trying to survive a, host envi a hostile environment just like mine. It, it was like the circumstances of the characters were so similar even though the novels are completely different. I was like, that's, that's my comp. The right. problem is, the problem is, it's a historical fiction, and if an agent sees that in the query, they will say, "Ah, she doesn't even read enough sci-fi to know." It's not about. Or well, if they're familiar, no, no, no. Or you, if you they're familiar with that, with compare right. that with something within your genre. Tell them, so you, like, you tell them in your query why it's a comp. You'll say because it has a blind character and it has this, uh, you know, you, you explain why it's similar. And it's not just one comp. You're going to have two or three and explain why they're all different. And that way the agent can sort of triangulate what ah, okay. your book is about. Yes, right. that is a key component of, of comps, at least on the querying side. For the publisher, it doesn't matter because they just input them into the system and the sales team goes, okay, it's like these three books. But when you're querying an agent, you want to give them context of why this comp is similar to your book that well, query letter is gonna get so long <laughs> well my, well no it's just two lines while while this you know while my book x is not historical fiction it has these elements in common with ah, x okay. because of this and this one sentence ah, two okay. sentences done all good, right good, you good. Got okay awesome thank you so, so much for all the tips thank you you're welcome. Um, okay i'm fixing okay. that query um that um, is yeah. So this is Mandy Lynn's book launcher. Oh, planner. wait. So, let's, okay. Let's talk about this after the break. Yes. Okay. Okay. Here's okay. why. One, we have got to get some more uh, we've got oh, to get words some more in. Sure. done. Right. But For the sure. other thing is I have stuff to say and it is not going to take a minute. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, whew, okay. Uh, one minute here. We are going to get our 20 minute sprint up. Oh, why do we have, oh, this must have just been running the whole time. I'm a dork. Okay, here we go. Uh, Doll, would you like yes. to take us out? Let's see if I can make this happen. Oop. There. And thank you so much, everyone, for your help and support. It means a lot. And now, like, if I can do this with the oddity that's my writing, if I can do this, then you can do this too. And I know it. And, like, everyone has a place in the market so don't get frustrated with anything that you hear around don't don't think about it now the time is to think about your words and the magic that you're going to put into that story we have 20 minutes on the clock and you will got to put your fingers on the keyboard put your mind into the right place and start writing in three print now
Okay, hold on. Let me just stop this little. Uh, there we go. I know I'm the only one. I'm the only live streamer I think that cannot like manage to stop everything when I'm supposed to. So you guys may have noticed that Robert also kicked off. <laughs> Not kicked <laughs> off as in he died. He is still alive, uh, oh but he had. <laughs> yeah, the thing he had to take care of. So, uh, yes. This is a stream uh, where every time we come back from a sprint, uh, it's someone, someone drops off. off. It's like a murder mystery this week, right? <laughs> it's a locked door murder mystery where every uh, time we do a sprint, somebody dies. All right. We need a death sprint. Hmm? Death sprint. Death sprints. That's what we're doing. Death sprints. Every time somebody... <laughs> or it's like a game show and um every time we do a sprint somebody is a, i'm sorry robert you've been an excellent player unfortunately you're yeah. gonna have to go home but our dun, two dun, champions dun. our two champions Sako and doll are going to battle it out <laughs> in the next sprint to see who will be the champion of lisa's sprint of lisa's live stream okay so yeah i know i'm a little punchy today you guys i i feel like <laughs> So I don't know if um, if Amy's still in the chat, but I was like literally crafting an apology to her for not responding because she sent me like she's so good with the website. Like, she's helping me completely revamp my website. She's she excellent. Me, she's great. She sent me this massive checklist. Like I'm breaking the project down into small parts, and I'm like, bless you. But I the holdup is on my end. I'm still like trying to just find a minute to get it together but mm -hmm. she's so like patient and kind and i i'm like writing this email and i'm just about to hit send and then facebook does this like restart thing where it's like sorry we got a problem and i'm like oh my god this is my day today so let's talk to some chatters let's have some okay okay let's, let's have do some that. friends who uh who are uh, hanging out here. Okay, so Sky said, oh wait, I want to go back to Margaret. So she, Margaret was asking about whether or not anybody formatted in Scrivener. I format my manuscripts in Scrivener, but not a, um, I've never formatted an ebook in Scrivener, but I'm very interested to find out if that's a thing. And it seems like it, maybe it is. She said, Margaret said, I uh, learned all the gymnastics to be able to use it for formatting. And now I'm leery of learning another way to format. Oh, I feel you. Yeah, Sky says I learned formatting because at the time I didn't know people to, who could build it, do it to build my wonder team. Wonder team activate. Indeed. Uh, and I enjoyed it enough that I kept doing it as a freelancer. That's cool. Yeah, there that's are a lot awesome, Sky. Uh, I would hire someone to do nearly everything except the writing part because that's all I really want to do is write. But the way my bank account is set up, LOL. Feel ya. Okay. What's what? Let, here's our question du jour before we go back. Oh, we're not going to have time for a sprint. All right, mm -hmm. let's just talk. If you guys had one thing you could pay somebody else to do, book right? cover. Book cover. Okay, that would you. That's what you do. Everybody in the chat, let me know if there was one thing that you could pay somebody else to do. No, don't worry about like what. Like this is imaginary. So. If you had the cash in your bank account, okay. What's the what's, okay. the what's the first thing you would pay somebody else to do? Doll, do you have an answer for that? Oh, it's a mystery. Oh, Doll, it's a mystery. Doll is saving her answer for later. Here we go. Yes. So my we can't hear you, Doll. That's what we're saying. That um, uh, oh, no, we can. Okay, great. Well, yeah, frozen for a moment. Um, an, an, an editor? <laughs> okay, no, wait. An editor, no. actually, yeah. that's a good call. Yeah, editor, developmental editor, copy editor, line editor, proofreader, formatter, cover designer, all the visual things that I cannot accomplish. That's not <laughs> one thing. What's the one thing you would like most to get off your plate? Damn. Uh, <laughs> I, I need a lot of help. Okay, um, if you want to be the champion doll, you have to stick to the rules. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, everybody in the chat, what was the one thing that you would pay for? Ooh, CEO Savvy has a great answer. She says, I'd, p I'd pay Neil Gaiman to do my audio book. Hell Mary, yeah. Mary Wimbley says, clean my house. Can I say something? Copy editor. 
This is the greatest thing ever. Oh, copy editor. That is a really good choice. Uh, yeah, having someone clean your house, even if it's like every two weeks, is life changing. It mm -hmm. really just, yeah, it frees up a ton of time and it's like such a, it's such a gift. Okay, marketing. Sky says, I'd rather just pass on marketing to someone else. Margaret is agreeing. JC says, take that back. <laughs> marketing, I would pay someone to do all the marketing. Ooh, BC Brown says, I like doing book covers, but I, my skills aren't there yet. All right. Yeah, here, there. I'm, yeah. I'm in that boat. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Margaret would say audio. Oh, Margaret says audio. Good answer. That is a very good answer. Audio. I'll on, do I'm the gonna... audio for you. I'll do it for you. <laughs> I'm going to go back. Uh, blah, 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 blah. BC says, who will the stream bump off next? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. I think it's dun, me. Dun, dun, the, the, stream, the stream just wants to kick me out like a half an hour ago. And I'm no. like, no. <laughs> no, I think Dolph coming back. She's like the return surprise guest. Okay, so the dawdling writer says, can't believe it's already June. Where has the second quarter gone, right? Oh. Um, BC also agreeing today. She's also punchy. Oh yeah. no! See, Sammy says, "Sorry, Robert, you are the weakest link." Goodbye. Hold on, I have to take a screenshot of that and send it to him because you <sighs> will probably think that's really freaking hilarious. All right, hold on. Okay, snaps. Um, blah blah blah. BC says, "Once you learn one way to format, it's really difficult to switch. It's daunting." Her Candy. answer for what is the one thing you would pay somebody else to do is book cover. That is actually the thing I would pay someone else to do. If I were going to, well, I'm not going to do two. I said one, I can't break the rules myself. Nicole says marketing hands down. Claude has an excellent answer. English translation. Mm -hmm. Eek says editing. Speaking of which, hello, darling. We're so glad you're here today. BC came in. Nihilist Geek came in. Margaret says book cover and I have wish list publicity. P having paying someone to do publicity, inside secret here, paying someone to do publicity can either be an awesome experience or it can be a horribly sad experience because it is the same amount of work for a ter for <laughs> terrible publicity as it is for good publicity and it is the same amount of money and sometimes no matter how hard the, pu the publicist works you're just not it's just not getting picked up and you can come at them with 50 different angles and it's challenging but sometimes it goes like gangbusters and you're like holy crap this is amazing so publicity is one of those things where you go like i want to do it but it's a lot of money and maybe i should just put it down the garbage disposal instead <laughs> okay all right uh sock uh jc says book covers plural because i need several okay yeah, now i think too. i'm now yeah. i think i'm back uh margaret says publicity is all in who they know that is absolutely the truth that is absolutely the truth um but i will take what i will also say it's a lot about the hustle too because Publicity, the people who are the most successful in publicity are the people who pitch and pitch and pitch and pitch. And that's part of like getting to know the media because you're constantly pitching them, you're forming these relationships with them. But also it's just like getting on the phone and saying, hey, I have this great client and yeah. Heather says marketing, JL says marketing. I'm an editor, I can do my own covers. So marketing simply because I don't have time for marketing. Ooh, marketing Mar is a whole job just by itself just by itself margaret says swap audio for marketing mm -hmm. yeah heather says oh. co copy uh, editor you say doll so yeah. Look, right <laughs> yeah um if people don't mind the funny accents and like this this narrator is definitely a foreigner like if you don't mind that because well, I know th I know that's a requirement. No, no, for real. Like for voice actors, if you have to sound British and you have to sound like that throughout an entire book, I cannot do that. I can just make fun of it right now because just to give you an example. But I don't sound British. If you need a British character, I'm not I'm not your girl because I, I I can't. But like, if you don't mind the accents, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I can do it. 
Mm-hmm. Well, but you have, I don't, like, don't sell yourself short because what you do have is a very cosmopolitan accent. You sound like a person who's lived all over the world, and <laughs> what do you know, you have, and that is going yeah. to be something that is appropriate for you. Know, lots of books. And you have an interesting voice to listen to. <laughs> That's good. That's Taco's good. making the margaritas. She's, <laughs> she's trying to sway the judges right at the very end. She's hoping she doesn't get kicked off the show. Okay, so BC Brown says, yes. Yes, uh, PR is networking and hustle. That's true. BC also does. That is true. Right. It really is. Part of it's a relationship. But again, it's because of that constant networking and hustle. That you know these people. That you know these people. Right. Networking on Instagram is. This is a thing. I am starting to be the social media manager for my mom. I know that sounds like what? But yeah, um, I'm helping mom with her own niche. Because cool. Instagram gives her kind of anxiety. No, kind of no. It gives her anxiety, period. So I'm like, hey, I'll I'll help you with that. And I'm also networking with my own Instagram and learning new things. And just marketing is really just connecting with a bunch of people. It to the point that it's kind of impossible to keep track with everybody. But yeah. I think every, everyone understands that well, we're all doing the same thing. Everyone is doing the same thing. We're keeping track with a bunch of people, trying to get the words out that, hey, we just published a book, connecting with readers, etc. cetera, and, uh-huh. and from all over the world. So, for example, social media manager is not just like someone who schedules your posts. Right. No, not just that. They also interact on your behalf. Mm-hmm. Right. And it is like all over the world so for example someone in australia decided to write to you at 3 a.m in the morning and you're like hey how are you blah, blah. after a while you can say hey it's gonna be 4 a.m i gotta go to sleep and they oh. get it they get it but you but you do interact with people from all over the world so it's a very hectic job people <laughs> think oh you just post on instagram oh that's cute and i'm like <laughs> no <laughs> Nihilist Geek says, welcome to my day job, Dalcy Saruno. Oh, my uh, God. Yeah, I hear you, bro. That's, yeah, that, that's uh, intense. <laughs> CEO Savvy says, how ironic that the ace from space has the voice for the character that's sexy and exotic. Work with what you've got, Dalcy. <laughs> that's it right there. Uh, BC Thank says, you. BC says, when I started in marketing, I learned how quickly it was a lot of effort and took time. It is a 24-7 job. It really is. That is true. And the other thing is there's no list of, there's no end to the list of things you could do. Oh, my God. We were going to talk about, speaking of things you can do, this would be a great transition. Ready? Hold on. One of the main reasons I got out of full-time marketing, just take case-by-case clients now. Yeah, for me. All right, Sako Tumi, you brought up the this little um, book planner. planner. Yeah, right. Let me say, I know you were like you're about to. I could tell you were leading up to say, "This is the awesomest thing ever." No, okay. Oh my god, because I thought I was going to just have to shut that crap down. I. I li- I know I'm not evil. I like her. I like her videos. I think she's delightful. She has great energy. There there <laughs> are errors in the book that I think I need to bring to her attention. Like- yeah, right. And I do not want to make this. Uh, I I bought that planner because I thought, ooh, well, this seems great. And having not only planned my own book launch for, you know, nine books but also planned other authors' book launches. I can tell you there is a lot missing. The timelines are not not good. And I do understand there's a big difference between traditional publishing and um, and indie no, publishing. but not, but not just, enough of a difference. For... But just from a PR perspective, there is not, you do, she does not have the proper amount of time built in there for marketing and for all, a lot of other things. Wow. But yeah. Wow. So I, and like I said, there, she has a lot of good elements. I love the idea of a planner and also God bless her. She's got this little business going. She got the whole purple thing, right? Which I like more power to her. She has got that thing out the door. And I think that is, fantastic. I was just like going to mention the comfort, the comparative titles. Oh, section. She has really, that yeah. was, that was the only thing that I was going to mention at it. Yeah. But uh, um, does she have good advice in there? I don't recall that part. Um, for the comp titles, yeah. Okay. 
All right, yeah. so there's there, so there's a little silver lining there. There's yeah, a little silver lining there. There's a little yeah. silver lining. So I know I got there. It. There are flaws, and I I want to bring them up to her because she just released a, a new edition, and I don't know that she didn't fix the calendar problems, oh. but um, I, I I feel like I should make a list and send it her way. I yeah. do, I think that's great. I don't know her. I like I said I like. I her don't know her either. And I like, like her hustle. Like I really like her hustle. Is, and yeah, some of like, the videos that she's putting out is yeah. like, Mwah, like she's I know. This. I yeah exactly. And so I hated that I didn't like it, and that's why I have not really said much. But I will say if you're thinking about it, that there are some, there are some schedule issues where she's not allotting a reasonable amount of time for some of these. I think anyway. that will be a great topic for next stream. Next maybe week. Because, yeah, because like how to actually like following, like not, not, not to, to bash her, her planner. No, no. no but no, like no. from your experience, Lisa and Sacco, from your experience, like how how we could discuss maybe how to plan a book lounge and like just share your own experiences. I think that is a great idea and that that is a fantastic topic for next week. So let's, let's be thinking about that. You guys uh, in the chat as well, be thinking about that. BC Brown, I would love to have you on next week if you're free, uh, because I think you would be an awesome, um, contributor to this particular topic. So I want to, let's go through the chat really fast and we'll say our goodbyes and then uh, we will take off. Okay. So sorry, Margaret says great stream. Oh, thank you. Wish I could click all your names in the chat. We'll seek out through copy and paste. Bye Margaret. Thanks so much for being here today. Very good. Thank you, um, Margaret. Guy says, my wish list, I want a PA to do all the marketing and social media, like Anne, the trustee assistant, does for Patricia Briggs. I have a social media helper, and she is the greatest. Her name is Beth, and I love her. Like you might have noticed, I dropped off the planet for the last couple of weeks, and yet my social media posts continue to happen. Continue to happen. Though I am, right? And she'll say, yeah, she, uh, yeah she's pretty great. That's um, awesome. It really is. Everybody's saying goodbye. Sky says, I'm glad I'm not the only one who didn't like it. Nihilist Geek. Man, uh, Geek, we're talking about Mandy's um, book planner. And um, I, you know, again. Book launch planner. Book launch yeah. planner. Yeah. And like, there are lots of things that I do really like about her. And honestly, I think it's good to have some organization. But I, there, I are just, some, there are things I like about this book, and there are things I don't like about this book. Well, let's have a chat about it next week. All right. BC says, I don't know her, but I was thinking about doing the same thing. Just a quick note to be helpful. Yeah, I think I had that on the list for a while. Sky, I'm terrible at book launches. Carol says, I ninja release, and she's absolutely correct. You do ninja release. Silent, but deadly. So does Mama Ward. Like Penumbra, M.M. Ward. <laughs> she, she's, niche, uh -huh. she's niched her like 10th book. That's amazing. <laughs> Lot like, says next oh, week oh, in the hunger in the hunger Lisa stream games. <laughs> All right. He seems like, oh, it's been a while since I've been on your on your stream, and I'm gonna be like, fresh meat. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, thank you. Okay, good. I didn't realize you were the next comment of when I just called you fresh meat. But you are BC, and I think we all know that. All right. Love you. Bye, Heather. Thank you so much for being here, you guys. Okay, let's go really fast. Sako, tell us who you are and say goodbye. Hi, neighbors. Bye, neighbors. I'm Sako Toomey, also known as Casboy. I write horror and I'm a witch and I'm a graphic designer. And sometimes I combine those three things. So if you are looking to market yourself as an author, I have videos on the topic on my channel. I've got a playlist and everything. You should drop by sometime. I would love to see you. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And you'll find the link down below. Sorry, I was just writing in my um, in my calendar that we're going to talk about that planner next week. Doll, tell us all about you, darling. 
Thank you so much for today. And yay, I survived the Lisa Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> we have for two now. champions today. Right. For now. <laughs> You're both going yeah. to the next round. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Delcy Silverno, a partially blind author, also known as the Ace from Space. I write primarily sci-fi, but also poetry and short stories in multiple genres. And my channel is quiet for now, but I do have short stories there available for you to listen. And uh, if you want to know more about me in a more recent schedule, you can follow me on Instagram at Dalsi Silruno, just like the name on screen. Thank you. Excellent. Very, very nice. Sky, I do not know what that is. <laughs> it's a block. <laughs> is she blocking us? No. All right, you guys. So I'm Lisa Daly. I write contemporary romance and uh, nonfiction. And uh, thank you so much for being here. We will be here next Wednesday. JC, I know I saw a comment earlier and I meant to get back to it and I never did. We are going to change our schedule. We believe we will be going to Mondays because we'd like to keep the band together. So, um, so we'll let you know as soon as we have an updated schedule. I hope that that works out for you guys. But you are awesome, and I love you guys, and thank you so much for being here today. Oh, it's so. a ninja. Oh. Ah, oh, it was a ninja? Hold on, it's I got to go back. Ninja. Oh, it's a ninja. Oh, oh my ninja. gosh. It's On StreamYard, it shows up to like as like a block. So, oh, thank you. You too. You guys are awesome. Love you. Bye. Bye, everyone. That looked like wax on, wax off right there.